Hey everybody out there, Chris and Mike here, and welcome back to another indie comic book review. Guys, after this video, there's a mini announcement for the indie reviews. This is the last indie review that's going to be its own entity. Starting with the first week of June, the Dark Avenger comic review, which is going to be coming at you guys tomorrow night, or tomorrow morning I should say, because this is coming at you on Monday morning. Tuesday morning, the uh, comic reviews for DC and Marvel are going to be coming at you. The following indie review, whether it be shot throughout the middle of the week or next weekend, will be the third part to the Dark Avenger comic review. So part one and two are going to be DC and Marvel, and then part three is going to be uh, the indies. Uh, we are going to be hitting, I believe, uh, 240. The comic I believe so. Let me do a quickly like, read. I think it was the comic review. I think it's 240 uh, starting with tomorrow night's uh, review. And that's why I wanted to implement this uh, now. Yes, we'll be yeah. hitting 240. Oh, wow. So with 240, the indie review is going to merge with the comic review. So I believe this is going to be episode 34. Uh, so there will be no 35. We're going right into the Dark Avenger. We're switching over the title. Basically the same concept. It's going to be the same thumbnail, same everything. It's just the titles changing uh, to the Dark Avenger review and it's the indies. Uh, recaps will be up soon also. I believe the Star Wars one will be right after this review. That's your news. I just want to give you guys a quickie piece of news. It took two minutes up, so we're going to go right into this. we got five physical books, yeah, four. four physical books, six digital books, and one book from the past. And we're going to start with the past. my pocket. Got to take it out of your pocket. All that time I was talking. Yep. So we're starting with Argo Comics Anthology issue number four. And like last time, I'll be doing the first story, which is going to be Impact International. Mike's taking the second one, which is Death Squad, and then we're both going to conclude with Havoc Patrol. And all the stories end with this part, I believe. Right. I want to make sure I'm in my head right. First story is about the international impact international and i believe we saw this in the i want to say the, the last not the last issue the issue before that about what happened with uh pendleton yeah yeah and you get the background story on how the characters got their powers which i found really interesting and i like that dan actually fleshed out again I love how he actually took the time to... I mean, he didn't do it in the first issue. He let it happen, and now he, he actually fleshes out how the characters got their powers. The artwork's amazing as well, definitely. First story, I love the artwork. And uh, how the team, International Impact, got together. And how Pendleton became a monster, ironically. And he was the one that did the splicing of the genes. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then he tells him like you know how he has like friends that he valued and everything you know because of that was international impacts the titan said that yeah the one what, thing he didn't know he didn't think yeah, about yeah, is just the power the character friendship. name but yeah she remind she reminds me from uh, Soraria Power a little bit I know right yeah it, it did for you too I forgot Darewolf the yeah Darewolf she reminds me of uh, Moose some Mushka Mushka thank you. So anyway, they beat him in the end, thanks to good old teamwork. Good guys prevail as always. It was an awesome, action-packed first part of three in the book. And next is yours, and I'm going to take a drink because I'm coughing. Yes. So this is, I believe, uh, Havoc Patrol? Oh, no, no, no. It's Death Squad. Death Squad. Sorry, there's just so many things in my head. So in Death Squad, um, there's like a huge fight scene that's going on in this uh, story where... Uh, from what we saw from the last issue, um, I, I forgot what that uh, big bulky guy was. Like basically, he was like they're facing uh, the three strongest uh, people, and mm -hmm. uh, first of all, the artwork is drawn uh, really um, like excellent. You know, based on the artwork, there was and one panel that kind of made me laugh when I shouldn't have laughed. This was a good panel right here with the, yeah. the uh, Death Squad. In a, it's a one-page spread. Uh, there was a page where they get teleported into space, and the girl's yeah. face made me laugh. It's like, 
Yeah, it's like she couldn't breathe. <laughs> no, she couldn't breathe, but it's like but the it's way like she's drawn was hilarious. Yeah, I thought that was actually uh, pretty hilarious, but... Oh, I'm actually, sorry, no, I was wrong. This is to be concluded. I was right. wrong. I was going to say, it's to be corrected, the next issue is going to be concluded because of what With happened. the Death Squad. Right, so now that everything <clears throat> is going into space and everything else, that's going to lead into more excitement of what's going to happen for the Death Squad team. Left you breathless, huh? Yeah, breathless indeed. Second story, which we're both going to be talking about, yes. is Havoc Patrol, the final gonna, part. That I know is the final part. How are they going to get out of that bubble? You that tell voice me. field. And there was this one character that had, like, the tiger claw, <coughs> and he just, like, clawed his way out of there, and I was saying that was a smart move, because I didn't actually think that they would get out of that force field, but just that one claw made me say, like, I didn't even uh, call that, but, I mean, I knew they were going to get out of it. But and I then Dr. Future how. tries to steal the uh, time travel car again, uh -huh. and he gets stopped. Right, and then the team, they just, uh, like, they really just, one by one, just... Uh, they take out his henchmen. He has this, like, tornado gun. Right. <coughs> Sorry, and, uh, my voice, my, my throat yeah. got very dry. And Davy Crockett, when he came in, when uh, Dr. Future got him so mad, he just gives him that right-hand punch, and that was just priceless right there. I love like it. Like saying, you got a man now, and bam, right in the kiss I loved it. This was a really good story, and for the three parts, it would be cool to see Havoc Patrol get a book. Dan's yeah. going to kill me. It's like, I've I've named like three teams I would love to see books of. Yeah, and actually what I liked about this story was that it said, uh, this is how it related to the Tall Tales with uh, Davy Crockett, the Cowboy, and so many things like I liked how they put the classics. Oh, I forgot the cowboy name. Let me get it for you. I'll get it for you. Yeah. I liked how he compared the classic uh, people from... The folklore. Yeah, the folklore, yeah. I just liked how he put the classic people with the team and then put it all together to make it one awesome book. That was just really what I liked about reading um, the uh, Havoc Patrol. Say. But... Um, and I believe that guy's name uh, that did the Tiger Claw was uh, the last person on. Oh, Bear Claw. Bear Claw, yeah. It was the Tiger Claw? It was a Bear Claw. <clears throat> what was a claw? It was the Lucky Claw. And there's uh, actually in the end of the book uh, some uh, cover Huge art. Huge pinups. Well, pinups. Huge pinup section. And you can guess which one was my favorite one. Yeah, I saw a few that I was like, oh, I know Michael's yeah. gonna love this one. One with the table and one then. Yeah, yeah, that one. Why? I couldn't help myself looking at the picture. Five stars. <laughs> yes, five stars. Awesome. If you guys have not checked out Argo Comics, uh, so far, best way to start or um, engross yourself in Argo Comics, I think, as much as I love Argo 5, Argo Comics Anthology is a perfect starting point and brings a wonderful for Argo Comics. Get the anthologies. If you like them, go into Argo 5. If you like them and you want something that's a little bit, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Breath of Fresh Air, one issue, one story, go for Sorority of Power after that. Trust me, you, you'll love that one. I'm looking forward. Dan has a lot of things he said he's planning for um, Argo I know, Comics I heard about that. Year. I'm looking forward to it. For the rest of the year, not the coming year. For the rest of the year and things, uh, things that are coming up from him. And I'm really looking forward to it. Check it out at Argo Comics. That's A-R-G-O Comics. Dot com. Really great stuff. <coughs> now, a lot guess, to look forward to. Oh. Now, the physical, physical copies. copies. We'll start with this one. This uh, one? Yes. From IDW, Ghostbusters Mass Hysteria Part 4. The encounterment with uh, Tiamat that has possession <coughs> of Lewis and Dana. And uh, we're going to find out uh, how they're going to get out of this. So uh, One thing I liked was when the Ghostbusters saw themselves older. Yeah, like in this page right here. Artwork is fantastic um, in this. So basically the old Ghostbusters... Uh, the, oh yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah the old right. Ghostbusters, yeah. They're telling like the new Ghostbusters about, you know, um, how this... Uh, how uh, Tiamat is more powerful than Gozer. And uh, how... Uh, there could be so much chaos and everything. I mean, I just liked how the communication between the Ghostbusters and going up the stairs, just like what we saw in the Ghostbusters. I like the rookie. 
Yeah. I like how they took the video game, they took the new Ghostbusters, and they took the original Ghostbusters, and now they have like a whole Ghostbusters squad. Right. The only guy I don't like is, uh, they have his name in the front, that I'm not really too much of a fan of, uh, the one looks like Inspector Gadget, yeah, Ron. I'm not too in with Ron, because he seems to be a little cocky sometimes with the team. Like, he's too seriously, much. you know. But anyway, so... They are going up uh, the stairs to uh, fight with uh, Tiamat's uh, possessions of uh, Dana and Lewis, and they try to get to them using their power, manipulating them by using their uh, powers of guilty stuff. And uh, they just get together on this page right here and just try to take uh, Tiamat down. But, you know, the one thing you'd never say is get her, because that's where she gets really mad and. A bunch of other stuff happens in this comic book where... Crossing uh, the streams. Yeah. You know, where you think it works. Now, now remember, it. Chris, you said never cross the streams. And then... <coughs> there's and they all did. Blood with lots of other stuff. So, well, lots of raining blood and all these demonic things are happening. It is really getting intense. But, guys... Classic, I love Ghostbusters. Yeah, with classic from the movies and the new things that are coming in this comic book, it just makes it awesome each and every time. A little I bit of news. This, this summer, there's going to be a Blu-ray set coming out for the Ghostbusters. Um, yeah, for the 30 years. The, it's going to be huge. Yeah, I think it was their 30th year. Uh, this is their 30th anniversary yeah, right this now. this past weekend, yeah. Okay, going into Dark Horse Comics, uh, one of my favorites, Tomb Raider, issue number four, where Law Croft is going back to the island to... Uh, get her friend back, or to find out what happened uh, with her friend, and uh, so yeah, so there's just like a bunch of uh, investigations where um, there's just, uh, I forgot what her name was, uh, like she's, uh, like like she's just really trying to find, I think her name was uh, Jolie, she was uh, trying to uh, save and everything. So, she's looking for these artifacts, and uh, she found this artifact that could that was taken from uh, the island. And Jocelyn wasn't too crazy about going with her to the island, but then with the daughter saying that, you know, she would. Because, remember, she still feels the guilt that whoever's around her, people die. And it really brings that emotion to it. And Jonah goes with her no matter where uh, she goes also. So while they go to the island of uh, Yamata, uh, she gets a dream vision of, oh, Sam. That was her name, Sam, not Joel, Sam. So she's getting visions of going back because lots of crazy stuff will happen. And I mean, first of all, like the artwork, this splash page right here is really like fantastically amazing. I mean, going to the island of Yamata, but she's going prepared right here. To the island, so I w that that left me like saying like I gotta see what happens next. Gil Simone and uh, Nicholas Del Daniel Selma, book of the week has to go to Tomb Raider. Really great stuff, and you know I can't wait to see what happens next. Now we go into Archie Comics of Dawn of X number one in uh, Mega Man issue number thirty-seven. And to be honest, I really thought that. The Mega Man, the original Mega Man, the old Mega Man were going to meet with each other, but apparently they didn't, which I thought they would based on the title. Well, not right away. Well, not right away, really. So, the adult Mega Man, uh, he's uh, in the city where people are trying to kill him, and uh, we get a Zero uh, appearance in this comic kind of book, and I thought that was pretty cool. And they're trying to talk about, you know, how the Emerald Shields, like, they should have been broken and everything. I mean, if you want to read more, you should definitely read the comic book. Meanwhile, we go into uh, the original Mega Man. And, uh, you know, he's just trying to prove uh, Dr. Wily's innocence. And, uh, you know, Dr. Wily, he, he's going to go evil because he just doesn't like how Mega Man takes, like, all, or Dr. Light takes, like, all the credit. You know so, he's going to go yeah, back. I yeah, I mean, Dr. Wily's one of those jealous people. And then meanwhile, Gil Stern and Rosalind Crocs, the federal agent, they go to this uh, secret laboratory and uh, they find out more about, uh, about Exter Payne with his uh, experiments of what he's trying to do, which doesn't look so good. And, uh, what? Did you see that? Yeah. 
Yeah. So uh, they go back to the Meza lab. Actually, thanks for turning it back because I forgot what lab they were going to. They get ambushed, but they meet up with this huge robotic spider, which they think is Dr. Wiley's invention. And Dr. Wiley, trying to say the buttons to turn it off, actually turned it on, and they think, you know, that what he did was it was a trap or did he really you know try to help so we all know that answer and then it just goes back to the adult Mega Man where we see this so maybe that could be how the original the uh, young, young Mega, Mega Man, Man I'll say young Mega Man could impact his future but um, it was lots of crossovers and uh, this was actually uh, my second uh, best pick next to Ghostbusters, a uh, book of the week, almost. But uh, can't wait to see if they're going to encounter with each other. I know you briefly wanted to Yeah, briefly, this. I'm just going to go over this from Bongo Comics, Futurama, issue number 71. Okay, I've read this comic book. They are try-harding on their jokes so much that it made me do this, like, five times, at least, if I miscounted maybe six. Basically, in Futurama, they want to, they have to make a delivery to the new old Brooklyn, which is ironically kind of funny, because Brooklyn, you know. And uh, I'll give you some artwork right here, which is drawn spot on, just like the cartoons that we see on Comedy Central. Are they still on Comedy Central? No. Oh, they got canceled. Whoa. We'll go figure. Yeah. There's this new Layla that um, she does just to impress uh, these people here that they go to this planet. And, uh, you know, they get together and everything, love's in the air, and uh, they just, uh, you know, do all this try-harding by fighting uh, this giant cannoli, which looked like a big cannoli. Uh, and then uh, Frankie T is talking about, you know, how uh, his shipment wasn't there, and how they're being late with everything, and, you know, then back at the old planet. It's just like lots of the three guys that we saw before. They get convicted for uh, some stuff. If you want to read the book, you're more than welcome to. And uh, in the end, they just chopped down some pizza. I was like, I don't even know why. I I wanted to just bring this review just to say Futurama is tryharding. If you like tryharding jokes, this is the book for you. But if you don't... Oh, it's canceled on Comedy Central. Who knows? Yeah. So who knows indeed. And that's all for the fiscal... Cindy's going to be reviewing that on Frontline at yes. some point. We're now in Dark Horse Comics. We're doing all digital now. And I'm starting with Halo Escalation number six. The final part to the first story arc. Next story arc, Master Chief's coming. Oh, I'm excited. yes. So I forgot the guy's name already who was going up against um, the Commander co Hood. Oh. But <clears throat> in the last issue, the... Um, Spirit of Infinity was shot, and the crew is all but destroyed. The ship is still alive, um, but uh, I'm trying to find his name. That's the most important thing. Clayton. Captain Clayton doesn't want to destroy the ship. And the elites, uh, Gadget, um he says, why aren't we taking it over? Why aren't we destroying it? You know, you had your vision, and then now you're backing out. So he just walks away, and he's like, you know what? We're going to take the ship. We're going to leave you. He paid us well, but now we, we're going to do our own thing, and we're going to get uh, more. So they leave him. The Spartans attack the, his ship. They seize the ship. They take him down, and... The elites, who actually Captain Clayton tried to get them to come back to help him, choose not to. However, the ship that Clayton's on is ready to fire its glassing ray again. And guess what happens? What happens? The Spartans shoot it back at the elites. Oh, wow, I like that page that you just skipped with the big, huge, where they shot back. Action packed. Mm. So then later on, Clayton's going to jail, but he tells, um,. Admiral Hood that there's a lot of um, people in his uh, group or um, <clears throat> where is it? Like right there? Is that it? Like where? I can't see far from here. It's okay. Ugh. I 
I got saw wearing green glasses. Oh, the new Colonial Alliance, which is against the humans and everything. They're they're all over the place, including on Earth. And uh, Admiral Hood says, "Help us out, and uh, before we send you, <coughs> or we can send you early." And he's like, "Go to hell." Oh wow. So there's been a lot of uh, conflictions going on. And basically, in the end, uh, he's reminiscing about um, Captain James Cutter and the Spirit of Fire and hoping that wherever it is, they're happy or, you know, the team's still in cryogenic sleep. <coughs> I gotta get a cough drop after this. Oh my God. The last page was what really surprised me the most. Yeah. So, uh, but, you know, after looking at this comic, <coughs> I'm starting to think, like, if Halo were to make a game called, just saying, for instance, Halo Origins, and if you saw this, wouldn't it be a good game? Oh, yeah. I, I, I think it would be a really great game if they did um, Halo Origins. Yeah, but that last page where they actually show you the Spirit of Fire, that was wow. That was wow. So... And that's why. Oh. <coughs> Let's just say the spirit of fire is not having a happy ending. No happy ending. <coughs> okay, so uh, the next one, uh, what is she's at? Five. Furious, number five. Yeah, I said five, yeah. Furious, number five. From the last issue, we saw uh, that a little girl was about to uh, plummet to a death and Furious has to uh, save her. But it goes back to uh, this girl right here, the the redhead. Uh, it says what her name is. Uh, Caddy, C A D Y. Yeah, and yeah, and Caddy. Um, she looks like a nice person. That actually helped uh, the 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 woman at the, the Furious. What was her name? Jody. Hey, Jody. So it's really like a Jody and Katie. Uh, Thing that's going on where they're fighting in the sky and <coughs> Katie just wants to show the people like saying you know she's not gonna save little girl she wants to expose who she really is so they're just having this big huge fight scene I think Katie is jealous of uh, Furious or Furio if that's what they called in the last issue and it keeps going to flashbacks about their past and they were like really good friends with each other and for them just to uh, you know fight like that it's just you know, how it actually got to that point <coughs> that it actually happened. Um, so, Furious uh, managed to save the girl um, after all that happened. And uh, the, the artwork was, like, really uh, amazing, by the way. Like, it, 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 it like, showed... Uh, it was a little bit graphic in some parts. Oh, yeah, that's graphic. I mean, yeah. But the artwork was really great. So, uh... And then it talks about like how Katie went through this uh, horrible uh, experiment that she went through with uh, all her stuff of superpowers. I'm, I'm guessing that's what it looked like, you know, from what I'm see from what I remember from reading. And uh, then after the girl was saved, you know, everything uh, you know turns uh, into a happy ending for everyone, but. Uh, the mystery of where uh, Katie went is uh, basically a little bit unknown. And by the way, uh, Jody gets that uh, scene with the guy that she didn't get with uh, in the first issue or the second issue. So I thought that that was nice that that happened. So really good uh, comic book if you want to look into it. Okay, uh, the next one is uh, Conan the Avenger issue number two. I'm surprised you're reading it. Um, to be honest, like, it is sketchy, but from what I'm seeing is that they see this person who he's fighting with, uh, thinks that Conan is a witch. I, I think it was the, uh... The shaman. The shaman. He thinks that Conan's the witch because of all the stuff that's happening with all these, uh, <coughs> zombies going around. But then, after a while, he finds out that he's not a witch because he's fighting against the the kind you know the kind that he thought was his own kind of witch so then afterwards they're starting to work together and find out why there's this uh invasion and, and like who's controlling them so they go to this one person uh right there um 
the great, like it's this big guy. Taylor? Taylor? Yeah, the great uh, Taylor. T-A-H-I-R. Yeah, Taylor. Yeah. And then they're trying to get answers out of him of, uh, you know, how uh, all this is happening. And then Conan, uh, you know, had a little fight scene with him. In the big, it was like a little bit of a fight scene, like not too much of it. And then after a while, when everything got uh, heated up and everything, Conan and the Shaman started to team up against each other. Instead of calling Conan the Witch, he actually called him Conan the Witch Slayer, basically. And he's just like saying, wow, first you call me a witch, now you call me a witch slayer. I mean, I would kind of question that too. And there's like a whole big long dialogue you can see where this uh, woman <coughs> that Conan sees is pointing to the direction of going which way that would be the right way instead of going the wrong way or into a trap. And it has like spirits and everything that's going on. <coughs> and, you know, after reading that, I was like, okay. Yeah, that's a little bit sick. Yeah, so... If the next issue doesn't, I'm, I'm saying that it's not really grasping me. Like, there's just something about it that's not, like, the first few pages did, but then afterwards I was like, mm, okay, I'm going to see the next issue, and if it doesn't grasp me, then I'm not going to bother reviewing it. Anyway. All right, before we continue really quick, give us just two seconds, and we're going to hit the button, and then we're going to continue. All right, and welcome back. And we are going into now Captain Midnight issue number 11. Yes. And in this issue, it's Captain Midnight versus uh, Helios. And finding out about, you know, what Chuck Ramsey of what he's really all about. It, it just first goes back to uh, the days when, um, you know, he had like that memory of a photo. You know, that was like a little bit of a heartfelt scene for him. So just do I point that out. And then we get into some really... Uh, action-packed uh, fight scene with uh, Captain Midnight and uh, Helios after the whole business of what happened in the last issue. And uh, afterwards, like, he's just trying to find from Helios, like, why are you working for Chuck? Like, what is it about him that, you know, you work for him and everything? And there's, like, a whole big thing about that. And one of his uh, teammates, uh, that girl, oh, what's her name? I hate when I forget this. Like, she wants to shoot him, and, and Captain Midnight trying to convince her, you know, if you shoot him, you know... Charlotte. You know, Charlotte. He's like saying, you know, you're, you're no different than he is, and when he tried to shoot him, it was like a hologram, so, you know, in the end, Chuck Ramsey got away, and the building was about to explode, and the team, you know, glided to the next building and got away safe. Then meanwhile, we get Charlotte and one of his other teammates that decided to go different ways, <coughs> leaving Captain Midnight by himself. And then we get introduced to this brand new villain. And right there, Chris, is actually the people that we that I've been reading in the past that he wants to go after Captain Midnight, X, the Occultus, and the other team. And and this is where it's going to get really interesting. Wait till you see the end. So where Captain Midnight's talking to this one guy, uh, he's just trying to make plans, you know, when to do a certain mission after Midnight. Those people on the bomb, Chris, you should definitely be familiar with, because yep. I sure as hell was. X, the occultist, and this other person on the uh, far left. I think I know him, but it doesn't click to me right now. After seeing those people, I was like saying, if Captain Midnight teams up with them, that, that that's going to be pretty sick. Interesting. So, I hope that happens. So, if you're listening, uh, it's got to happen. Definitely. Next, City, The Mind and the Machine, issue number four. Yeah, and I believe this is the last issue. I'm not sure. I don't know if it's said to be continued, but basically, um, oh, oops, hit the wrong button. Uh, he just wants to avenge uh, the uh, death of, uh, I believe, uh, Henry, uh, you know, the robot guy. It's, it's oh, the, the end, end question, the question mark. mark. Right. So he just wants to go after... Um, the guy that was behind this whole shooting, uh, he says that, um, like... Owen? No, Owen was, uh, the guy that they shot. So he just wants to go after, uh, like, um... Callahan? Yeah, Callahan. Because Callahan was behind this whole murder scene, and they want the army and everyone to shut him down. 
because he could tell what's happening because he had, he's a uh, half computer, half human. So really, that's the whole thing about the book, like him just uh, avenging the death of Owen and trying to get other people to help him out as well with this whole uh, thing that's going on. Uh, artwork is realistically drawn in a great way, by the way. Um, and every which way, he's just trying to... Uh, Not that much dialogue, it's a lot of just action. Yeah, just, just Callahan just saying, you know, uh, we gotta kill him, like he can't live and everything, and he just tries every which way to kill him, and, you know, he, he just goes through everything, like, you know, like, saying, you're not going to destroy me because, you know, like, I'm this human that you can't destroy, <coughs> but in the end, it gets a little bit uh, crazier in the end, where uh, this woman that he was with, she's starting to hear uh, voices, so... Maybe there's something in connections to him that we don't know about, which is probably why it's a question mark. Because it's going to relate to that woman that was... It'll uh, happen, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I could say by a long shot that it's probably going to happen where they're going to make another uh, series of that. And so. finally this week, Samurai Jack, issue yeah. number eight. This had no dialogue. At all. I got through this book in like two minutes. <coughs> it's basically, from what I'm seeing, Samurai Jack is uh, fighting against... Um, Haku. Haku, thank you. And that's really the whole scene. Like, fighting against Haku, and it was a really amazing fight scene, by the way. And the artwork is drawn just like what we see on Cartoon Network. And it's just like all fighting, fighting, fighting. And then when he's having his doubts of losing, he does this whole... Um, Oh, wait, wait, I'm gonna get it. Um, meditation, like, you know, like how he concentrates and then yields the sword and then wins in the end. After that, two minutes, I'm like, okay, interesting book, but it would've been better if I've seen some dialogue. Because seriously, there was no dialogue in there, just all the, the whoosh and all the sound effects that you see, that's really the main thing. There was and no, that's it. So, yeah, there was no sense in everything, but, uh, those of you Samurai Jack fans, you'll definitely uh, get a kick out of that book if you've been reading it uh, all along. Yeah, I have other books from this week. Mostly they're Star Wars. Also, to be uh, to note, Boom Studios released Night uh, Breed number one. Yeah, I read it. Um, to be honest, it was good, but it kind of related to Satan, sort of. Yeah, it does. You know, with his whole, uh, I'm going to get this woman that I feel is going to be right for me. And then in the end, uh, she's saying, you know, let's work <clears> together. <throat> and it, it was very bloody. Another bit, another but... book I can recommend is the Chu Revival crossover one shot. Mm -hmm. It starts off with the Chu artwork with the first story. And Chu and uh, the girl from um, Revival is in that. And then it switches over to Revival, where Agent Cho is drawn in that art style. So there's like different <laughs> arts uh, in stories. Donna. Yeah. Is uh, from Revival. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Really good. I just did not, unfortunately, I did not have the uh, chance to... Um, finished the book, but it has artwork from both uh, both uh, comic series, and it has a feel from both, Right. written-wise. Especially Chew. There's a lot of Chew in the first story, especially. I still don't understand how you like that comic. Don't forget to check out comic-related, Comic, comic Frontline, and Zone4Podcast.com. Together we are your number one source for comic-related news, reviews, and a whole bunch more. Comments! Recommendations. Agree, disagree, like, dislike. Into Feel free comments. to leave them in the comments section below and we will be answering your comments this Friday on the weekly comic book call with or without voices. My voice is coming back slowly, so expect, like I said, the recaps throughout the next week. Yep. As well as videos from both of us on Comic Frontline throughout the week. <coughs> Apologies again for the coughing and the throat. It's getting better, hopefully by... Tomorrow, you must get better. I'll be at least by 98%. Right now, I feel like I'm at an 85%. I'd like to get another 
that uh, boost back to 100%, but... Oh, over 9,000. All I need is about another 10% and I'm, I'll be happy. 95% is better than nothing. 15% will be good. But until next time, everybody, take care, keep reading, keep collecting, and we will see you guys in the next review. Later, everyone.